Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks of plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig ghost, Matt. Let's bet on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today? Episode 202. And today we have a lovely, quite interesting interview with Michelle and Natalie of... Most recently, Lego Master Season 2 fame to be kicked off of the grand spectacle itself. And I know it just makes me sad because they were one of my horses that I claimed in that first episode. I'm like, Natalie and Michelle, Michelle and Natalie, Zach and Wayne, Wayne and Zach, these are my two. I expected them to go deep. They went, they both went deep. Both pairs went deep. Unfortunately, only one is going to survive at this point in time. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the interview with these two awesome peeps. Well, girls, I'm sad that you're here um, because at the beginning of this, I chose you as like one of my top two that was going to go to the end of this and it just didn't Aww. happen. So I'm, I'm super <laughs> sad that that happened. But I want to talk about relationships because it, it seems like you guys had a, a, a constant bubbly personality with uh, everybody that was on the show. So who, di- who did the two of you bond with kind of the most during your time on, on, on the show? Brian and Lauren. <laughs> Brian and Lauren. <laughs> For sure. They were our bandmates when we would travel back and forth to the studio a lot. So we all just ended up talking a bunch and connecting really fast and had a lot of similar interests and liked a lot of the same things. So we ended up getting pretty close pretty fast, <laughs> but everybody was really great. I mean, Not it was fun one. being partnered up with anybody or sitting next to anybody. Everybody was so friendly. Awesome. Well, I, I read something. Uh, I think um, maybe Natalie, you had kind of said that as well before. So that's really cool. And that, that that's, that's really nice to see, especially because, you know, they got booted a few weeks ago, which is another, uh, it's just horrible. Anyway, um, I do have a question about the end of the show. Um, Natalie, obviously you guys had a lot of emotion that was going on. Um, I know Michelle, you were like in tears and stuff like that. And Natalie, you were kind of more reserved, but then you had mentioned to Amy, you know, about um, your your daughter and stuff like that and an inspiration and stuff like that. So I mean, do you guys plan on uh, using your platform, your popularity now to help boost even more for little girls in, in the world for, you know, saying, you know what, you're a little girl, you can go on and be big things. Look at what she did. You know, like going into it, I never even really thought about that. Like as far as, you know, having that sort of influence on people outside of my own family, because we both have daughters that are actually, they're like four months apart or something. And I know that my girl, and I also have a 24, 24 year old. And I know like my girls were like super excited about it along with my boys. Um, So it's since this has happened, just um, going to doing, uh, doing a couple of meet and greets and meeting all of these families with all of these like um, kids and especially like the girls and then um, parents saying how much like um, we've inspired them. That's like really, I mean, that just touches my heart. And so I would love to be able to do that. I just have to figure out like how to, how to do it. But um but it's, it's really a neat thing to like get messages or see people in person and say, you know, my daughter was just really inspired by you guys. Like I didn't, I didn't actually like think about that going into the show, but it's been such a, um, it's, it's been such a special thing. So I don't know. What yeah, about you now? Yeah. I don't know that I thought about it in perspective of like us inspiring people <laughs> as much as I like knew from experience that like my five-year-old watching season one was like, mom. It said she works at Lego. She works at Lego. That means I could work at Lego. And I'm like, well, yeah, babe, you can do anything you want. But there is something really powerful and important about representation and seeing somebody that you identify with, like, you know, across genders or maybe like interests or whatever. Like there is something really powerful identifying with somebody doing something really cool or that you want to do. And so I knew that I saw that with like Riskmaster Amy. And I really hadn't thought about like the fact that like, oh, like I was genuinely surprised when I got similar messages like Michelle that people were like my daughters love you guys and they're like pulling back out their Lego bricks and so that was really 
cool and kind of surprising because I don't know that I really thought about that going into it either, but it's really a fun, a fun, happy, you know, surprise from all of this. That's awesome. That's always good to hear. Uh, the last question I have for you guys. So over the course of your competition career on the show, you would put some amazing builds together, like, like from the first go to even this one, I don't think was really send home worthy, but I guess, you know, somebody has to go home. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, what was a build that you would like to you know, have more time on or have another shot at, you know, to really go back and, you know what, I could do this better. or We could really improve upon this. The last one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the last one. Cause then I was like, oh, maybe we could have, like, if we could have just like done the telescope and like actually had it do what we wanted it to do. And um, then, you know, maybe we wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those things when you look back, you're like, oh, what if we would have tried this or what if we would have tried that most of the other ones i think like you know also the rat alien you know would have changed up a few things i like i would have um but but the last one for sure that's the one that i'm like oh dang it if we only could have just done this or done that or but overall i was really happy with all of the stuff that we put out so yeah i would say this last challenge too it's i think it's definitely easier after you've had some time removed and it's like oh yeah, we could have just used like this with this or, you know, underneath that clock pressure, you're kind of, you're just kind of crunching and you're relying on what you know. And there's like this much time for experimenting and you have to like a lot for some of those things that you know are going to go wrong. And so we knew that we were going to have some, you know, stuff we were going to run into. And so, yeah, I know like for me, I thought, oh man, why didn't we just try this with this, with this? I and know. I know. <laughs> And even watching the episode last night, uh, seeing like the brick tips, because like we don't hear when they're filming those, even though they're I in know. the same space. <laughs> even though they're in the same space, like you can't hear very far in there. And so um, it's sometimes when they would be filming those brick tips, I would just like go get a tray of bricks so that I could get close and like hope I would hear some like helpful bit of information. But even watching that last night, I was like, oh yeah, duh. Like, why didn't we try that? So yeah, I mean, I think any of our projects, if if you go back and be like, oh, if we had this much more time, we could have added this, this, this little detail right. and it may have made it just this much better. But for sure on that last one, it was like, oh man. But hey, I'm, I'm still just excited that we made it this far, that we met all of these amazing people and that we really pushed ourselves and we tried some new things and we took some risks and I'm really proud of us for doing that. I appreciate your time and uh, we hope to see you back, you know, at, at a show or something like that. I definitely want to see some of those creations in person. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Hi, Michelle and Natalie. Super, obviously glad to be talking to you, but wish it was under different circumstances. Um, you know, one <laughs> of the things that really struck me about the two of you during the season was obviously you know, your commitment to your families and being moms, you know, that that was really a superpower for you. And it gave you that childlike, uh, you know, perspective that Amy, you know, congratulated for you, you congratulated you guys for last night. You know, I'd love to get a sense from you, you know, looking back now and watching the show back with your families, you know, what was their reaction to getting to see you guys on TV and how you guys did, um, you know, throughout the competition? Oh, uh, my, my, my family doesn't even refer to Tuesday as Tuesday anymore. It's Lego master day. So like, they, <laughs> they were just so excited. Um, like they were of course disappointed last night, you know, that our Lego master um, journey had come to an end, but through the whole thing, you know, and they were honest, you know, with like going, you know, with like the builds, like ours versus other people's, like I would ask him like, what was your favorite, you know? And so that was a fun, it was fun because we watched season one as a family. And so talking about the builds from season one and then doing it again with season two. And sometimes they would, you know, not think that ours was the best and that's okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, my daughter always thought ours was the best, but um, <laughs> my boys, sometimes they, you know, leaned, you know, towards more, you know, somebody else's build. But um, but it was just, it was just, it was fun. And they, I think they still can't believe it. I still can't believe it. Um, so it, I just can't believe like we, we went there, we did this amazing thing and now we're back and, and now it's almost over. So it's, it's crazy how fast it happened. Yeah. Our family, it was really funny. Um, similar. <laughs> my, my youngest was especially honest. She's five. And so like last week she was like, Oh mom, Oh, you're going home tonight's your night. You're going home. <laughs> I was like, thanks kid. Thanks. You know? Um, 
but my older my older daughters we adopted uh, them when they were four and five and now they're 13 and 14 and they're like mom it's so cool you did this you know like like way to go they were a little bit more even keeled about it um but my youngest was just you know brutally honest um and she <laughs> she got very attached to a lot of the teams there were many tears shed from her when there were eliminations like she just cried her little heart out when Brian and Lauren went home I mean yeah. she got so attached to to the team so yeah it was really funny um my my nana would like text me her like if she had a twitter account and would live tweet updates that's what she was doing with me via text but it usually wasn't ever me being the favorite she's like oh this is bad <laughs> or she would be like oh, yes yes my nana and then she would text me like oh, okay well that turned out all right for you or um, you know, just go, oh, I really like so-and-so's build. It's great. Like, hope you guys can pull through. So it was just so funny, like hearing the wide spectrum from family, like either cheering us on or giving me a hard time, but all in all, it was mostly positive. <laughs> my daughter would do that. She actually lives in Texas. And so she watches it two hours before I do. So when she's watching it, she's like giving me constant updates, like via text, like da, 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 this happened and this happened and this happened. So it's like, I got to watch it twice. Um, each, each Tuesday. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, obviously, like one of your big highlights throughout the season was the hats incredible challenge, you know, with your big win on that hat. You know, I'd love to get a sense from you, just like anything we may have missed from that episode or anything that you were especially proud of that may not have gotten the airtime uh, from that particular challenge. I think what I was especially proud of is just like how quickly we just kind of like we heard the challenge and already like my mind. And it's so funny because like everybody's mind is so different. So for me, I'm like, okay, everyone's going to be going for this, 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 and this part. So we got to get over there and we got to make sure we have like enough parts to, you know, make our creation happen. And, um, and it's funny because nobody used anything that I thought they would, but, um, so that was kind of cool. I feel like that was the one challenge that we like, um, had our idea the earliest we had mm-hmm. stuff out on the table, like pre- like w- with our, within our very first check-in, we had lots of stuff out for, um, Brickmaster Amy and Jamie to kind of, um, look over. So, so I felt like, like we were in the best position on that particular challenge. So, um, yeah, and that one was like extra fun. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm saying as far as anything that was missed, I don't know that anything, except for the back of the hat, I wish they would have showed the back of the hat because it had like mm. the white they're going down the back and I thought that was a pretty like yeah pretty detail. um well, but in feature else I don't know I thought it was shown pretty well yeah I was trying to think if there was anything interesting that didn't have time to make the edit on that one because I know there have been a handful of episodes that it was like I thought for sure something that happened was going to end up in there and just for time reasons or choices or whatever wasn't in there and I feel like on that one it was pretty well like like distributed into like story and time and stuff um but yeah, that one was definitely like the, the, the most fun, probably because it was easiest that like immediately we were both like kind of seeing some of the same stuff. So like, you know, whenever you have creatives in a room, you're always going to have tons of great ideas. And so that one was really fun that like, we we're both on the same page right away and could just like run with it instead of like, sometimes whenever you have creatives, you're like, oh, I was thinking this. And then you have to like explain it so that somebody else can see what's in your head. And sometimes that's a hard thing to do, especially when you're on a clock and being timed so that one was just extra fun that like immediately we hit the ground running and like almost didn't even need to finish sentences it was like we could do that yep yep got it okay and we could do that so that just made it extra fun that it was um I don't know just a little bit more easy sailing and got to explore the creativity side of it instead of some of the functionality even though that was still a part of it we got to spend more time on the stuff that really energizes us like the um the aesthetics and the, just Perfect. the whole movie challenge was like amazing. All the backstage stuff was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I loved that one particularly just because like it was kind of like all of the contestants, we were in it together. Like even though we're being judged like with our respective team, there was definitely this camaraderie aspect backstage and we could all kind of like be louder and be talking versus like a yeah. traditional judging. You're very like, you're quiet yep. and you're listening. And it's kind of like in class when someone's presenting a book report, this one was way more like, Oh my gosh, did you see that detail? Look how amazing that is. Oh, look, they're coming. Da, 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 da. Like there's uh-huh. definitely a fuzz and an energy about that one. That was so, so fun. Uh, well, we had fun watching it too. Um, but the last thing I'll just say is, you know, certainly we got to see a lot of both of your personalities on the show. Um, you know, I think especially Natalie, you know, you're bantering with Will trying to steal his job. And of course, the amazing pipes that we got to see in the puppet challenge. You know, I'm just curious to, to you know, if, if there was any reaction, to, especially from fans or anything, just to seeing like uh, 
all of you on display in this sort of way, um, you know, and, and kind of what's next. Uh, are you coming for Will's job? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've had so many people jokingly ask me that. I'm like, you know, I'll keep my phone on in case anybody wants to give me a call for something. <laughs> but no, it was just fun to like joke around and hang out. Like, you know, Will was super fun and chill to interact with. Like, I wasn't really quite sure what to expect there, but he was super fun and funny and just like really nice and relatable. So were Amy and Jamie. Like, I don't know how you felt, Michelle, but I know I came away going like, man, those were just great, like fun people. Like, even though we were kind of intimidated going in, I'm just like, oh, it's like they had so much helpful feedback and um, I don't know. It was just really fun to be part of, especially since like for me, this was something I never thought that I would be part of. I do a lot of other creative things by vocation and like Lego wasn't ever anything that I'd like been commissioned to build or do. And so getting to like explore a new creative outlet was so fun. And I'm just really thankful that Michelle brought me on this journey. It was so much fun. I, I just think like everybody that we met along the way, like everybody that was in front of the camera, behind the camera, everyone was just, it was just like a really incredible experience. Like, you know, going into it, you have, like, I had no idea what to expect. I only know what I saw, like, you know, on TV from last season. And um, it was, it was wild. You know, I applied for season one and I didn't get on and then reapplied for season two. And, um, and and was shocked that you know we made it but i'm so thankful for it it was it was like a once in a life lifetime opportunity so and i'm glad we got to do it well that's so great it was so great to get to talk to you and hopefully i'll get to talk to you both again soon yes thank you thanks hi natalie and michelle megan with brickset so good to see you again so for my first question i wanted to ask you really around representation and ideas that you might have what what can we do to encourage more women and girls to get in the hobby? Or what would you tell a little girl or a woman who's looking at Lego Masters to, to encourage them to take the plunge to join us? Well, I'm like trying to think, like, cause I have, I have a little girl of my own and um, well, I have two, two girls of my own, one's little and one's not so little. Um, I don't know, I just, I guess it, it applies like in Lego and then all the other, you know, areas of life, you know, like you can do anything that you want to do. You know, if you, if you, if, if it's something that you love, like for me, I didn't realize my love of Lego until I like five years ago. And so, you know, like I, you know, I tell my kids and, and other people, you know, you're never too old or too young to discover a passion and then just do it and see where it will take you. Because I mean, look where it took us. It's, it's kind of incredible. Um, as far as getting people into it, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question. Like um, other than, I don't know. Like, I mean, if it's something that somebody really enjoys doing, like for me, it was just, I did it with my children. Like I, um, my boys were really into Lego. And so I started building with them and it's just something that's been really great for our family. It's like brought all of us together. I have kids from, well, 24, but, um, 14 down to just barely six and we all, um, enjoy it and have fun doing it together. So it's, it's something that just, my age all the way down to my six-year-old and enjoys doing so it's it's just been really a great like thing for our family yeah that's kind of like a, a big question I wish I had some really good like off no. the top of my head answers I mean I imagine you probably spent a ton of time like researching this and talking with a bunch of people and probably have some better ideas like ready to offer I know that I've been really like excited from some of the messages that I got. Like there was a message that I got today on Instagram from somebody that said, Hey, I'm a woman. And it was really cool seeing you guys on the show. And I just kind of forgot my love of the bricks and seeing you guys building stuff inspired me to pull my bricks back out. I was like, dude, that's awesome. Like, I hope you build something super creative and tag us in it so that, you know, thanks for sharing that. Like, I don't know. I just think it's, um, super cool to have been part of this. And I hope to, to kind of see that viewership and um community you know like the lego community embrace a lot of the female builders that I, I see them like championing and lifting up and so i hope that that continues and grows yeah i actually don't i actually don't know many women in my life before before i um before we got on the show i didn't know any women really who built with lego so it was like for me i was like asking you know myself gosh i wonder like if there are other women out there that like it or is it just me like I know other men who liked it but women I didn't ex well except for my daughter my youngest one but but that's the that's really something to keep in mind because I I wish I knew all the answers for that yeah it's it's something that we always like to ask folks and I mean that's why 
Women's Brick Initiative really exists is so that women who like Lego can connect, no pun intended, uh, with yeah. each other. And it's really fun to get those, find those, those, those women who are coming out of their dark ages. Um, but back to questions. Um, Michael had asked you about details on your hat build. I'm curious if there are details on some of your other builds that didn't make it on camera that you wish had been highlighted. A funny one that I thought of the other day was on our circus build. I actually put two little mini figs in um, overalls <laughs> with hair that looked like us over by the popcorn machine so that we could just stay in our little circus build forever, leave a little part of us there with it. Um, and I was like, I was trying to look for a photo. I don't think that I saw it, but I was thinking, oh, that's kind of a funny little like little wink. Um, what I'm else is in there? I really loved like our um, our rollers, but I think they made a. I think there was a. I thought those turned out super fun. Our hair curlers. Um, those were super the, fun. But those, were, I think, those were noticed. And it's so hard for me because like I see everything, but then I'm like, when I talk to my daughter, I'm like, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Like she didn't see the popcorn machine like really popping on the circus um, build. So I thought that was a super fun one. Um, I'm trying to like in my mind go back to all of the different. I know. I'm like, which one was okay? There was. Let's see. Um, let's see this one. Uh, Gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, let me think. Um, I don't know. I think, I think overall our stuff was, I mean, I think I saw all of the things, but, but yeah, I would say like the curlers and then the shirt on Betty Bricks, like that was, that was like a super fun detail, but that was pretty, you know, stand out on the, on the build. I'm trying to think which ones were before that. Yeah, I don't know. I think our, I think our colors were super fun though. And I think that, um, trying to think of like the popcorn I mean that one I think like the animation was like super fun um I love that I love that I think got animated um but let's see I don't know I don't I can't think of anything specifically okay. um and my last question when we talked to I think it was Brian and Lauren a couple of weeks ago one of the things that they they had mentioned and, and I agree is that your builds were very particularly well suited for television that you were really good at building building a creation that showed very well on TV where you had details, but they were larger details that really showed well on TV screen. Was was that purposeful or, or can you give us a, a little bit of insight around your creative process for doing that? I think that was probably more of a happy accident, honestly. Um, and then just um, maybe, maybe just because watching the show, I mean, my family and I watched um, season one, I would say probably the whole thing five to seven times through just because we liked it so much. Um, and of course it was like the pandemic. So what else are you going to do? We watched Lego masters. Um, but like in my everyday, like actual building before the show, I I mean, I was used to building out of tubs, you know, like those big moving tubs. That's where all of my Lego parts and pieces were. And I shared them with my children. And so one of the really incredible things about being on the show is the unlimited supply of brick. So I knew going into it that I wanted to do bigger than I've ever done before. But I guess I didn't really think about that, like the whole made for TV thing. I just knew that I have all of these brick and like, you know, the possibilities are endless. Like if we run out a little, a little bit, somebody's going to, you know, bring some more in. And I've never had that before. I've never been able to like grab, you know, just big supplies of bricks and so, or in other parts and pieces. So I think that was just the excitement of like having everything readily available and then just seeing what we could do. And plus just, I guess maybe from, you know, working in other projects, um, seeing it from that kind of an eye, like I really like stuff that looks, um, like not like Lego, I guess, um, more eye catching and working on other projects that I've done before, everything's been sort of big and oversized. And so maybe I was just bringing a little bit of that in to Lego, so. I think I see you like a lot in your interior design stuff, like always backing up and going, okay, what's the first impression? And I think we both did that a lot with our Lego builds, like backing up and going, okay, like, I feel like for the majority of like the stuff that we built, we kind of go, okay, what's it looking like? Like we'd step back for a minute, like kind of thinking, what's that first impression? Like, is it readable? Is it like noticeable? Like, can it be, you know, can you know what it is without explaining it? Um, and since I do a lot of video producing, like in my brain, I knew, okay, they're only going to have like three seconds of B-roll for this whole thing, like a wide and two close-ups. We don't know which two close-ups they're going for, but we know that wide shot's happening. So like, is it going to be like noticeable right away? I know that's always in my brain. So that's why I'm backing up going like, okay, what's the first impression? Or like when yeah, you first walk in the room, like, where does your eye go 
first, like in an interior design. And so I know I couldn't help but think that way a little bit. Um, and it was kind of like, I think if we had unlimited time or more time, we'd start with those big things and then go down to, okay, how do we make these small details perfect? And a lot of times based on time, we had to start with like big, easy, recognizable stuff. And then depending on time, that kind of determined just how much detail we could add in there. So I think it was kind of sort of an accident, but also just kind of how we naturally go about some of our projects of like, what's the first impression going to be? Cause you only got one of those, you know? <laughs> And then like, even like to start on our float, I mean, we were making paint cans. So those are just, you know, big in size anyways. And we wanted them to read like actual, you know, paint cans. So, um, so yeah, so I guess it's just a combination of bunches of things, but we did step back a lot. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Does that read that right? Oh, that's super helpful. Thank you. And thank you for your time. And hopefully we can connect sometime in the future to get more women in the hobby. Yes, yeah, thank you. love it. Hi, right, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks uh, for having us. Speaking of details, how about the details in the castle uh, that you're especially proud of that weren't caught on camera? Uh, let's see. So in the castle, um, we did have like back tucked in the box. Well, okay. So we had a few different um, areas. Like, so the box on the ground, um, the moving box, there was a picture frame in there and then lots of packing peanuts. I think some of those were a little, I think you could maybe tell what those were, but the, I thought that was a super fun detail. And so I we had a few. like the tape on there too, like the packing tape just out of the clear window pieces. That was fun. Yeah, we had, um, what else it was? And there was- um, There was a remote in there because kids are always playing with remotes and turning them into like lightsabers and stuff. There was, and in, in the box that's like on the wall that like was open to the front, there was a, um, um, a crown and a um, shield. Mm -hmm. And let's see what else was there. There were some balls in there. We also had a rainbow that we were gonna add to the top. And in the last like literal second, it was like Michelle stepped back and was like, it's too busy. It's too much. Like, take it down. And so we like took it down in the last few seconds. The yeah. I, re I was really proud of the little like um, the moving box sign where it says like up and it has the arrow like adding yeah. those into our boxes. That was a fun little detail. Yeah, we were actually going to try to do like the words of, like moving or some kind of box or something. And then Will came over and he was like, so are you guys going to add the, the arrow? And we're like, oh, that's like perfect. Yeah. So, uh, and super recognizable. So that's what we did. We added like the arrow. And then there were also some, um, some books like between, like underneath where the turrets, um, the turret boxes were, there were a couple of books in there because, you know, kids are always just grabbing random things to make their fortresses with. So, and the markers, the markers made it back from our fan episode. So. Fantastic. Uh, what building techniques did you learn or improve upon during the show and what building wisdom did you pass on to the other builders? Oh, uh, you know, I think like, you know, for the most part, whenever talking about the other builders, they would like, they loved the markers. So from our fan build, um, they really love like um, our ability to take the bricks and look, make it look like an object that you would see in real life. So they love the curlers. Um, and then the packing peanuts. I remember Wayne came over and he's like, oh my gosh, those are packing peanuts. That's so cool. Uh, I think what I learned from the other builders, I just, I don't even know that I can put it into like words. I just remember like looking around the room sometimes and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so neat. And then I don't know that I, I mean, I just kind of stored it into my, into my brain. I don't know of like a specific technique. Um, I do remember, I was telling Lauren this too, um, cause they made a, um, a crown for their, um, princess pup. And, um, so on that was like on puppet challenge and then coming around to our castle build, Amy and Jamie had come over and they're like, well, you know, we'd really like to see some of the things that maybe kids would play with if they're actually playing castle in your build and so I was like oh a crown and so I remembered their crown and I didn't do it as good of a job it was it was one of those like last minute things but I was like oh okay yeah Brian and Lauren did a crown and like so um so I kind of pulled from that a little bit from from memory a little bit so um, I was really impressed that like I mean I didn't really know what to expect going into the competition but I was just really in like I just thought it was so cool that when we got there, people were really open to sharing their yeah. techniques and their ideas, like yeah. hanging out in between things or while we were waiting for things or fittings or hair or whatever, like Jen brought a Technic book 
And I was like, oh, hey, can I check that out? She's like, yeah, okay, check out Paige, blah, 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 blah. And so we were kind of like looking at some different techniques or just like simple machines or like, you know, talking with Moto, he had a little gift for everybody. Like all the teams he had, you know, built these little, I don't know what you would, they looked kind of like cute little robots um, that were going to like terrorize you, but also like be the cutest thing you've ever seen. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are so fun. And they kind of like unfolded like, accordions and he's like do you want me to show you how I did it blah, blah. I was like yeah I've been taking it apart put it back together I liked this 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 um or like even with some of his other stuff like he's done this amazing like wolf head that can go on he's like oh it's actually really simple like I'd be happy to show you how I did it well like everybody was just very yeah. like open it was like anything I've learned like ask me I'm happy to share it um which I didn't really expect that going into this competition I kind of expected the people to be really kind of hush hush with their secret trade or technique and um it was just a really cool like learning group everybody was very open um or even you know like helpful in ways that you would kind of think like why are you helping me like I'm yeah. in competition in this um so it was just it was really I don't know cool it was just really cool that people were apt to share and, and help others learn it was cool and, and in the brick pit, when, when you were looking for a specific part, you're like, oh my goodness, like, where is this part? And then you, hey, did anybody see this part? And they're like, oh yeah, it's over in this bin and that section. Yeah. And, and so that was really neat too. Right, right. Yeah. It was everyone, like, everyone was really helpful. That's great. Uh, maybe like half the challenges were about breaking things. How'd you react and adapt to those? <laughs> oh, you know, like as far as like the, well, you know, whenever you build something, you never want to see it like destroyed. But, um, cause I'm like, I'm a little bit sentimental. I like to keep all of my stuff together, but, um, I think like the hardest part was like, okay, so I don't know pyrotechnics. So on challenge two, it's like, you know, trying to figure out where to put like the certain, you know, explosives. Certain, yeah, <laughs> explosives to make it like explode the way you want. And we're like, oh gosh. And then the 60 mile an hour winds were like, oh man. Uh, I think like that was just like challenging because I mean, I, I mean, I've, been I guess in 60 mile an hour winds but I've never had my Lego in 60 mile an hour winds so um just trying to like figure all that out on the fly um was definitely much more destructive than last season I didn't expect it to be so, <laughs> so destructive yeah it was uh it was definitely nerve-wracking because I mean there's no way you can test out exploding your build before you explode your build so um or shaking, you know, it. Or shaking it yeah even with like our our that large cake that we built we've never done that before. So we're like, well, we could take some of like our woodworking techniques from when we've built like furniture pieces and like apply it to Lego and see if it works. Like we were just kind of pulling from like random experiences that we've had that aren't Lego to see if it hopefully applied. And so it was definitely nerve wracking because not only are you trying to create an impressive build, you're now trying to create a performance build. Um, So yeah, we were definitely on our toes (laughs) for most of the challenges for sure. Cool. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So uh, you mentioned a couple of times that you guys uh, spent a lot of time watching season one of Lego Masters. I'm curious uh, if that helped or hindered your uh, pr- your preparations for getting onto season two. I would say helped. I think it helped. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, just to like look at, you know, just to watch it and see like the scale of things, I guess that helped too. Um, uh it helped get me excited and get my kids excited as well. Um, uh, and then just kind of like whenever they would build, you know, build certain things like, you know, like zooming in and saying, Oh, okay. So that's how they did that, 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 and that, you know, like trying to like figure out what their technique was for different things. Um, most of the time we just watched it just for fun, but there were times and that I was like, okay, let me just zoom in on this. Let me screenshot it and like, see like how they did that. And, um, you know, because I've never built something in like in, such large scale before so um excited to try but it was kind of like oh we'll see we'll see what what happens (laughs) I thought it was definitely helpful especially for both of us when we were working on stuff to have other things to reference it's like what if we built this one like they built the carrot last season and like we both knew we were talking about like I learned Amy's like carrot or what if we did like you know remember on the bridge challenge like I think it gave us like a helpful uh, vocabulary of like different builds to reference as we were like spitballing ideas and different ways to try and make these builds perform in different ways. <laughs> so I think it was for sure helpful. So if you could uh, go back to your pre Lego masters selves, what advice would you give? 
<laughs> bring on the coffee bring on the uh, coffee. Learn, technic, <laughs> learn gears learn motion that's what i would say learn motion oh my gosh learn to work with technic learn uh, technic um yeah motion technic that's what i and would say. all the coffee <laughs> I don't Ooh. do coffee, so um, <laughs> you do coffee a lot. Um, I did so much coffee. Those four-hour nights just like, whew, they got me. They got me. Awesome. So uh, in the last episode, it kind of looked like uh, you were a bit wary, maybe, of going up against the uh, the Castle Bros, having yes. since they'd had quite a bit of uh, experience with that. So I'm wondering if you could have designed your ideal challenge what would that have looked like? Oh, building something that Ooh. looked like furniture. <laughs> Doing some kind of furniture thing. That would be my ideal challenge because it would be something that Natalie and I were both familiar with. Um, and, you know, we all know castles, but whenever you're going up against somebody who is, you know, has won awards, that's a bit intimidating. And I've actually never built a castle before. Um, we do have a couple like sets, but my boys mostly built all of those. And I just look at them and think they're beautiful, but I've actually never built one. So, but yeah, some kind of like moving, working, like furniture thing. So. Yeah. We had also spitballed an idea that we hadn't had a challenge that it would work for yet, but it was like, Oh, what if we made like a quilt and like a sewing machine, yeah. but like, you know, put them all together with like those mixel pieces. So there was a lot of movement. We'd also talked about like a dresser that was like in the middle of being restored. And so we were trying to just like tuck away some ideas in case there was anything that fit. We had something that, you know, maybe would work for that. We didn't have the opportunity to use those for anything. Um, but definitely if there was something that was along the lines of like building a piece of furniture that you could put in your house that has to be functional, something like that would have been right up our alley. Well, you still have the opportunity to do that and uh, show us online, right? <laughs> I did build a small version. Time. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Thanks. Thanks. Well, that'll do it for another episode of a interview with the most recent kicked off ease the the most recently departed from the lego master season two show and man it's sad to see him go but hopefully you learned some things got some more insight to their building to their personality to anything their character that was on the show with that said next week is the final episode the final interviews we are going to have a jam-packed session we've got all three in about a 90 minute segment um, that we're going to be interviewing with. So hopefully I can have those turned around into you guys in the same week. That is, that is my plan either way until the next episode pops out. Remember there is a special something coming tomorrow on the 10th of September. Stay tuned for that. Watch closely wherever you download the show, listen to the show, live stream the show, play the show, whatever it will be there as soon as that time pops. So until then, I'm your minifig ghost, Matt. Let's build on it.